Welcome, John. I'll let Sam know you're here. Have a seat over there and we'll be right with you. Thanks. This is my last chance. If I don't pass this time, I'll be working a desk job for the rest of my life. Don't worry about it. You'll make it. I have to. My wife will kill me if I don't get that promotion. Your wife's a lot scarier than the confidence course is. What was that? What did you say? Nothing. Relax, man. You'll be fine. They're ready for you, John. Right this way. Welcome, John. Glad you could make it. Good to see you again, old friend. The shop asked me to run you through a refresher course before clearing you for your next assignment. This will be a good chance for you to brush up on your skills before heading out into the field. Ready when you are. Okay, let's begin. Walk up to the door ahead of you and use the control panel next to it. That's right. The use key will work on most locks, keypads, switches and the like. Move on to the next area and we'll start off with some basic agility training. Let's test your legs. Jump over the obstacles in front of you. Very good. Now this next jumping exercise is a bit more complicated. You need to jump up and then crouch to give yourself an extra boost to get over the wall. Excellent. Jump crouching can be a bit tricky, but you'll get the hang of it in no time. You'll need to crouch and move forward to get through this next area. To get even lower to the ground and fit through tight spaces, you can crawl through them. Nicely done. Jump into the pool here and swim underwater to the next area. Excellent. It's as easy as walking or running, isn't it? Good news, you've passed the first part of the test. So let's move on to weapons training. Pick up the pistol in the first firing range booth, aim it at the target, and fire away. Now move to the second booth and pick up the M4. You may fire at the target when ready. Go over to the third booth, John, and I'll tell you about firing modes. Some of your weapons will have multiple firing modes, including the M4 you're holding. You can adjust them to single shot, burst fire, or fully automatic. Give it a try. Very good. Some weapons also have an alternate fire. Your M4, for example, has a grenade launcher mounted to it. Give it a shot. Just be careful where you point that thing. Those grenades can be just as deadly to you as they are to the enemy. Firing modes and alt fires vary from weapon to weapon, but you can figure that out as you go. Let's move on, shall we? This explosives range will help teach you about throwing grenades. Take a few practice throws and get a feel for it. Once again, you need to be very careful with your weapons. If not used properly, they can do you more harm than good. Literally. Let's move on to emplaced weapons.
Walk up to that M60 and use it. Notice how you slide in and take control of the weapon? You may find these babies modeled in the field or on attack helicopters. Get familiar with them, and they can be your best friend. Let's move. If you run out of ammo, or if you're trapped in close quarters, you may need to engage the enemy hand-to-hand. -hand. In these cases, use your combat knife or the bayonet mounted on the end of your AK-74. You may attack the enemy at your leisure. Very good, John. Glad to see you staying in practice. Weapons training is complete. I'll meet you in the next area for HUD training. I'll be communicating with you through your radio headset. All right. Let's take a look at your heads-up display or as the shop likes to call it, your tactical HUD. On the bottom of your HUD are your health and armor. The bar across the top displays the amount of armor you are currently wearing. Watch this one closely. It's the only thing protecting your hide from a bad case of lead poisoning, if you know what I mean. The bar below your armor meter shows your current health. When that runs out, you'll be pushing up daisies, so keep an eye on it. Your armor will generally run out before your health starts to drop. That is, unless you're hit with armor-piercing rounds or you fall for a long distance. To the left of your health and armor meter is your personal audio detection device, or PAD for short. The PAD tells you how much noise is being generated in your vicinity. The more noise you make, the easier it is for enemies to find you. Keep your eye on the PAD display if you're trying to be quiet. If it turns red, everyone will know exactly where you are. The lower right-hand image is your weapon inventory. Use the number keys 1 through 0 to select the specific weapons that you are carrying. Or use the next weapon and previous weapon keys to cycle through your weapon inventory. This defaults to your mouse wheel. If you're using two weapons at the same time, a second identical weapon display appears on the lower left. All right, it's time for equipment training. Okay, John, pick up the night vision goggles on the table to your right and continue to the next room. Items are handled a bit differently these days. Your new shop issue toolkit, for example, is something you can use automatically with the use key. You can utilize your toolkit to cut trip wires, pick certain locks, and do a variety of other things. Move to the locked gate in front of you and open it. Good. Notice how the toolkit icon appeared on your HUD when you got close to it? If something requires your toolkit, that icon will appear, so watch for it. Other items you'll encounter in the field include binoculars and thermal vision goggles. Activate your night vision to move through this darkened area. Nice work, John. Now, we're going to apply what you've learned and take on stealth training in the next area. I know it can be tempting to charge into every situation with all guns blazing, but sometimes there's something to be said for being quiet. You're going to find yourself in situations where discretion is the better part of valor, so there are a few things you need to know. Use your personal audio detection device on your HUD to keep track of how much noise you're making. It's a valuable tool and one you should use wisely. Some of your weapons make more noise than others. The knife and the SOCOM pistol with silencer are very quiet. 
The M4 and AK-74, by comparison, are certainly not. If you're trying to be quiet, select the best weapon for the job. The crawling you learned earlier can also help keep you out of sight, especially in jungle areas. Going prone and staying still is also a good way to hide behind objects so enemies don't see you. Pay attention to your enemies and their equipment. Some may utilize mounted security cameras to watch your every move. Steer clear of them and you won't raise any alarms. And be careful about letting enemies run away from you. They'll be sure to set off alarms any chance they get. Well, that about covers it. Now, let's put this knowledge to use. In the center building of the next area is a target that represents someone you need to take out. Your mission is to infiltrate the area by sneaking past the guards any way you can. Don't attack the guards patrolling here. They're actually shop employees who are helping me with training exercises. Which reminds me, don't attack civilians in the field. Innocence must be protected at all costs. If you attack them, your mission will fail. Good. Stay out of sight. You can lean around corners, which is useful to survey an area while remaining somewhat undercover. Go up to that wall and lean around the corner. Watch out for that camera. There's the building. Your mark is inside. Nice work. Notice how the bullets from your weapon penetrated the glass? You can shoot through some objects like doors, windows, and cloth materials. I don't recommend trying to shoot through steel or concrete though. That could get ugly. Well, John, you passed with flying colors. You did a fine job, as always. I'll be happy to inform the shop that you're cleared for field duty. Be careful out there. <laughs>